there was a great rabbi. They called him Rabbi Khanan Basaman. He came to America once to collect money for the yeshiva in uh, Baranovich, Poland, uh, Europe. When he came to New York, he was staying in Williamsburg. There was a great rabbi in New York at the time. His name is Rabbi Yosef Henkin. Yosef Henkin told Rabbi Khan Vassaman, there's a very, very, very rich man in Manhattan, a Jewish guy. His name is Philip Goldstein. He owns a big warehouse, he makes suits. He's rich like Korah. Go there, maybe he'll get some money for the yeshivas, but I have to be honest with you, he's a Kamsan. He's a Kamsan by Kamsan. Give a penny, he's a typewise, he's a cheapskate, doesn't give it. Not only that, he used to be religious, now he's not Shema Shabbat. I don't know, he's he went off the derech. He said, Why are you sending me there? He says, Because I know he will come from the same city as you. He was born in the same city. Maybe there's a. So Rabbi Khanan calls the guy up. He says, uh, Philip Goldstein? Yes, who's this? That's Ochanan Masaman. He says, Ochanan? From the city of such and such? He says, I remember you. How's things? How's it? Can I come to your office? Abu He comes to his office. He says, that they were menacing. Yes, we were in the Cheder together, and this place, and that place. And, oh, Ochanan sees the guy. So after long talk, the talk was very good. He asked Rabbi Khanan Basman, so what did you come to me for? So Rabbi Khanan, he says, uh, you see this button over here, it's loose. And I heard that you have a suit factory. So I figured maybe I come here, you could tighten the button for me. <laughs> he says, you came all the way from Williamsburg to here, so I can sew a button for you? He says, no, I came all the way from Lithuania to here. <laughs> so I, you can sew the button for me. He says, forget about the button. I'll give you a, a new suit. We have all these. I like my suit. I just need the button to be, please. If you cannot help me, I'll go somewhere else. No, no, we can help you. He takes him into the tailor shop. He says, Rabbi, uh, one you here, the other buttons also, you don't touch the other buttons. Only this button. He says, that was very strange. You, you came all the way from Lithuania to here. You found me. Yes, I looked you up. I found that you're the suit guy. I said, you're my friend. You'll do it for me. He says, that can't be the reason why you came over here. It cannot be. It makes no sense. He said, that's the reason I came here, to fix the button. He fixed the button. He says, thank you, Philip. Nice to see you. Shalom Kulilitz. That night, Philip Goldstein cannot sleep. Like a Hashverosh, Balayla, Huna, Dida, Shinata, Melech, Hashverosh. He can't understand what this is, the strangest guy. He came all the way here just to fix the phone, doesn't ask me for anything, doesn't want anything. He calls Rabbi Henkin the next morning. He says, Rabbi Henkin, is Al Khanan next to you? He says, hey, Rabbi Khanan, this is, he wants to speak to you. He says, Al Khanan, you have to tell me why you came. You have to tell me, I, I cannot function. He says, I'm telling you why I came. I came to fix the button and I have to have a karatatob. You fix the button to that button. He says, please come to the office. I need to talk. He comes to the office. He gets to his office again. He says, that. He says, please, I'm asking you one last time. Why did you come? He says, I'm insulted. I keep on telling you the reason. He says, but the reason doesn't make sense. Nobody's going to come from the other end of the world to here just so I can sew a button. So that's the reason. I mean, I'm also insulted that you keep on asking. And therefore, I'm leaving. He walks out. On the way down, he chases him downstairs. He blocks him from the elevator. He says, I'm not letting you leave. I'll give you all the money for the yeshiva. I'll give you all. He says, he tells him, I didn't come for money. If I came for money, I would have asked you for money. I didn't come for money, I came for the button. He says, it makes no sense that you would travel at the end of the world to fix a button. So Rabbi Khan had fiery eyes. He opens his eyes and he looks at him and says, 
Philip of Pinchas. You're right. It makes no sense to travel from one end of the world to the other end of the world to fix a bomb. He says, Philip, you know you have a neshama inside of you? You know where that neshama comes from? The neshama comes from a very far, far off place. The neshama comes from the seventh heaven. You know how far the seventh heaven is? Much further than the Thuania is to New York. And in between each heaven there's 500 years distance to Gemara says. And therefore your neshama comes from a place that's thousands, if not millions of light years away. And God takes the neshama that comes from a far place and sends it all the way down. Philip, why did your neshama come from such a far place? So you can make suits? So you can make buttons? Just like you cannot accept that I came from Lithuania to fix a button, you cannot accept that the neshama was sent from a far place to make buttons. That's not the purpose of life, to make buttons, and to make suits, and to make widgets, and to make merchandise, and to sell. That's as ridiculous as it sounds like me coming to fix a button. Therefore, you must have come for a higher purpose. What happened to you, Philip? He starts to cry, he starts to cry, like a baby. In one word of Rebbe Khanan Basel, he turned him around, and he made him Baal Teshubah. We don't come from a local destination. We originate from a very far off place. And you have to think to yourself, why would God send us to such a far place? Must be there's a purpose, must be there's a special reason. And that reason is this the Torah Kedoshah. And therefore, I say it one time we must not forget our purpose. We must not forget our reason.